Hi, Greg Brunson, another useful tip for you. Today we are going to go over troubleshooting the Limbus circuit on a single stage furnace. The 80% furnace will have a main air limit, a rollout limit, and limits on each side of the blower. The 92% and the 95% will have a main air limit, a rollout limit, a vent limit, and limits on each side of the blower. Whether it is an 80%, 92%, or a 95% single stage furnace, the goal here is to be able to identify if the limit circuit has an open limit, high resistance causing voltage drop, a grounded limit, or even possibly a wire that is causing high resistance or an open circuit. Take a look at the wiring diagram. The limit circuit starts and ends at the 9 pin plug. Terminal 8 is the output to the limits and terminal 3 is the input back to the board after passing through all the limits. I can tell you from experience, typically the resistance across the circuit should be less than 1 ohm and the voltage drop across the circuit should be minimal. The limit circuit should never show resistance to ground and should you get a limit that is grounded and it does happen, it will rob away the VA from the transformer and will never let full voltage get to the gas valve to open it. Also, a grounded limit circuit will rarely blow the fuse on the board. High resistance in the limit circuit will cause significant voltage drop and can cause misleading board codes and will not allow enough voltage to energize the gas valve. Now that we have shown you the wiring for the single stage furnace limit circuit, allow me to demonstrate how to test the limit circuit both using ohms and a voltage test. I want to kind of point out the limits in the furnace so we get a little better understanding of the circuit we're looking at here. So the circuit always starts and ends at the 9 pin plug which is the, where the blue wires are on the single stage furnace. And the limits I was talking about, the 80% versus the 92 or the 95%, the biggest difference there is on the condensing furnaces you will have a limit on the inducer itself. On the non-condensing 80% furnace you will not have a limit on the inducer. But all the li other limits stay the same. You're still going to have a rollout limit up here on the burner assembly. You're going to have your main air limit here in the middle of the furnace, whether it's off to the right a little bit or dead center, it doesn't matter. And then you're also going to have a limit on each side of the blower. So that's the circuit that we're after in troubleshooting. So now we'll do an ohm reading and a voltage test just to demonstrate how you would go about testing this circuit. So as I said, this, the circuit starts and ends from the 9 pin plug. So if we just simply with the power off, unplug the 9 pin plug, find the two blue wires in that plug, which would be this one and the middle one on this other part. And as you can see, my meter went to 0.4 ohms, 0.3 ohms, right around in there. As, as I said earlier, that ohm reading should be less than one ohm. So that's a good limit circuit. The other thing you want to do is just go from one of the wires to ground. Your meter should say OL. That tells you you don't have a grounded limit circuit. Then the other thing we can do is demonstrate what an open limit circuit would be like. So let me get back to my 0.4 ohms. I got the 0.4 ohms, but as soon as I pull a wire off a limit, or if a limit trips, you will see we go to OL, meaning we got an open limit in that circuit. So what do you do when you have an open limit in the circuit? Well, one of the things we can do is take an extra three or five amp fuse and just go to one limit at a time. And as I did with this one here, I pulled both wires off the limit. And I don't know if that limit's good or bad, but I'm starting with one at a time. And I unplug the wires and just put them on a three or a five amp fuse. You're not fusing it, you're just using it to act as a jumper, it makes an excellent jumper. Then I can take that ohm reading again between those two blue wires. And as you can see, I'm back to 0.4 ohms. So I, what I just did was I bypassed the limit that is bad. So that's the limit I need to replace or was open for some reason. Again, if it's a, if it's a manual reset limit, it may just be tripped and you need to hit the reset button and then you need to figure out why that limit's been tripping. So there's your ohm values as far as testing the limit circuit. The other thing you can do, along with taking the ohm reading up here, if it is one of those blower limits, you have a nine pin plug, and if you look closely in there, 
it's got the two blue limit wires that go to the limits on each side of the blower. So what we can do without pulling the blower assembly out or anything, you can simply take an ohm reading right across those two blue wires and it should so show relatively less than one ohm as well. And I'm getting a 0.3. I know for a fact that the limits in the blower are fine. But if I get an open limit code on the board and I take an ohm reading of, of the blower limits and I get an uh, OL or, or high resistance there, then I know it's time to pull that blower assembly out and take a look at the limits on each side of the blower because you don't want to reach up in there and try to get to them. So let's go ahead and proceed on and go back to doing the same test, but this time I want to do it with a voltmeter and show you how to do it that way. Now, right now, we got a closed limit circuit and no codes, but I want to make sure you guys realize that when you're doing the voltage check on the limit circuit, the limit circuit's not truly powered until we get a call to W. So we have to have a call to W from the thermostat. So with that call to W, then we can do the voltage readings. So let me first point out, I'm going to show you on this blue wire here, down here on the 9-pin plug, that's going to be our output to the limit circuit, and this is our input back from the limit circuit, as I talked about earlier. So let's go ahead and give it a call for heat. I get my jumper on there. And as you can see, going right next to the wire there, the common, I'm getting 27 volts. The other side of the circuit, 27 volts, which is good. So now let's get an open limit here. So I'll pull the wire off, which is gonna start your blower up too. You're gonna get the limit code on the board. But as you can see, I no longer have the 27 volts. The meter's saying like 252, but that's millivolts. So I don't want you to think it's 250 volts, because it's not. So we definitely lost our voltage on our power feed back from our limit circuit. And if I go back to where the limit circuit is getting power, I'm still getting my 25 volts out to the limit circuit. I'm just not getting it back because of that open. So that's how you can do it by using voltage across the limit circuit. Okay, so the one other thing I wanted to show you here was what if you had high resistance in the limit circuit? So not necessarily an open limit, but really high resistance in the circuit. As I said earlier, you're supposed to have one ohm. So going across that limit circuit again, across the two blue wires, just as, as we were before, as you can see here, we've got a defective limit in here at 98.7 ohms. So when you get a resistance reading like that in that limit circuit, a lot of times it'll cause this board to give you some really weird codes. It may not even give you a limit code. So it's one of the reasons why I wanted to pass this on is that, you know, just taking a minute to do a simple test to that limit circuit to see if you've got the proper resistance across it could save you a lot of time and troubleshooting and keep you from chasing erroneous codes that are being displayed on the board. So I do want to put out a warning Bypassing limits for testing purposes only. Never leave a furnace limit bypass and leave the furnace in operation. Hope you found this tech tip useful. Keep checking back to edgetechhvac.com for more useful tips.